Hi and welcome to the Adam Shop channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammed Azam with the second part of implementing Ghetto Birds. And uh, let me actually go back to the Xcode and see what we did last time. So if I run this, it's going to simply uh, basically run the level and you will see that the Angry Birds or the bird that we have it actually uh, drops down to the ground or to the surface. Okay. Uh, what we want to do is in this particular tutorial what we want to do is uh, we want to create something over here like a platform on which the pig is resting the our enemy the pig and we want to put this bird on top of this pillar or whatever this cardboard thing is or a box okay so let's first do that i'm just going to open the level helper and uh just going to put it on the top okay and the good thing is that I can simply save it and it runs. And you will see that since the bird is dynamic, it actually falls down. So it doesn't really rest on the platform or on the box. So what I'm going to do is select the bird or select the sprite. And I'm going to go over here. And instead of dynamic, I'm going to say that the bird will be uh, static. So once that is set, the bird will actually stay there and the forces like the different forces like of the gravity it won't have effect on it all right so next up is that we need to create some sort of a pillar on which the pig can be uh, resting so here is one pillar and we can actually make two pillars over here and you can see it's very easy to do that um, I will also suggest that there's the option over here snap so turn it off so don't check this because then you cannot place the these pillars in a correct position so now I can actually run it and you will see that it looks like this kind of okay and finally I'm just going to get a, a pig over here what happened okay here we go and I'm going to put the pig over here uh, I'm just going to make the pig uh, dynamic instead of no physics. It's kind of running really slow because I'm also recording this, of course. Uh, and I'm going to make all the pillars and everything uh, dynamic. So I'm just going to select all these pillars and everything and just going to make them dynamic. There we go, dynamic. And let's go ahead and run that and uh, it kind of looks okay uh, you can adjust this pillar to be like really on the top kind of hard to move here we go uh, maybe over here okay and uh, let's go ahead into our uh, code and see if the changes are there so I'm just going to run it from Xcode and here we go so you can see that the changes are over here and uh, the angry bird or the bird over here is not really moving it is static instead of dynamic but we do want to move it when I click over here I do want it to launch how will I do that pretty easy box2d has some methods uh, to apply forces uh, and those methods can be called like apply linear impulse and apply force and all that stuff uh, first of all we need to get the bird uh, into a variable okay and if I go back into the level helper and if I select the bird and I go up to the top of the properties you'll see that it has a unique name of course you can change the unique name the unique name is kind of right now the name of the file of the bird or the file of the sprite uh, it's called ghetto underscore bird uh, and we can pretty much use the same unique name I have already made a sprite class so this is LH sprite which st uh, stand for level helper and if you're using Cocos 2D you might be familiar with uh, CC sprite so we're not going to use CC sprite because LH sprite has some additional methods uh, which will allow us to do many cool things so LH sprite angry bird and now we need to get that angry bird and uh, so we are going to get it over here angry bird equal to loader and then we will say uh, sprite with unique name and if you remember the unique name was uh, ghetto bird 
and this is how we will uh, get the uh, bird in a variable. So now touches and everything, uh, we need to do, we need to implement the touches method. So I'm just going to say cc touches begin. And inside that, I'm just going to get some code. And uh, if you have been following Coco 2D tutorials, you have already seen this code a lot of times. Okay, what it does, it gets the touch event, uh, the touch object UI touch, it gets the location, converts the location to the GL, OpenGL, and then we will simply find the distance of the, of the touch uh, between the Angry Birds uh, and the location where you have actually touched, and uh, using the Pythagoras theorem that you learn in high school. And if the distance, we can say over here, if the distance uh, is uh, less than equal to 10, so if you have actually really clicked on the bird, then we have to do something about it. Okay, so first of all, we need to make the bird dynamic. And it's pretty easy since we are using LH sprite, which has some additional methods. We'll simply say, make it dynamic. So now your bird is uh, in a dynamic state, which means that uh, the uh, forces of nature or the forces of physics can affect on that. Um, we are going to apply uh, basically uh, some force on it. And uh, you can see there are different forces. I'm just going to apply, apply linear force. And uh, we will say, which is B to vector. Okay. So um, how much basically you need to apply over here? I'm just going to say 0 0.5 and uh, 0 0.25. So this is the, basically the force in the X and Y direction that I'm applying. And then I can say Angry Bird um, get world center. Um, oh, it's not on Angry Bird, it's actually on the body. And uh, Wow, that's kind of weird. Let's see what's going on over here. Get world center. Hmm. Um, B2 vector is 2. Okay, so here we go. And uh, let's actually run it and see what's going on. So now when we click on the bird, here we go, bam. Isn't that cool? So, and now you can actually click it uh, multiple times and it will go. Um, you know, let me actually run it again because it was so cool. The only reason that it is moving it is that we have uh, made, made it dynamic and also we are applying the apply linear impulse. Uh, the, the movement over here is actually dependent on how much force you're applying over here. And you can see I'm applying only 0 0.5 and 0 0.25. It also depends really on the, the gravitational force. So if you have a very high gravity, it's going to work very fast, which you might not want because you, you just want the, the bird to flow in a very, uh, you know, smooth motion, slow motion kind of thing. And uh, it's actually hit, it's a first time hit, right? Uh, and that's pretty much it. So in this particular video, you learn about that, how you can uh, basically apply forces on the bird and let it actually fly like a bird or fly like, uh, uh, you know, with a dynamic property so that uh, everything will have effect on it. The forces of nature will have effect on it. Now, most of you have been emailing me about donations and I'm really, really, uh, you know, thankful for all those emails. Um, currently, I do offer, uh, I do actually take uh, the PayPal donations. If you go to simply my, uh, the Adam Sharp channel, like this particular page that was actually open before, uh, and over here you can see the donate button. You can simply go and donate whatever amount you like. If you have certain preferences, I know that people in Europe, they I think use Flatter. I haven't checked out, but if you would like to, uh, if you think that Flatter is a good idea, then I can actually hook that one up also. Um, or actually, you can also buy my app from here, Kinderpop. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much uh, 
pretty much it and I hope you like this video tutorial and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you very much.